So as a continuation, we go to your part of the nervous system. A mere uh, idea of the part of nervous system which we can use in polygraphy. Okay? So part of the nervous system. We have two major, the central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is consists of the brain and the spinal cord. It is the processing area of information. Okay, the brain and the spinal cord is the processing area of information. And then, uh, the peripheral nervous system, this one is the responsible for providing sensory, okay, which is afferent. Informa information to the central nervous system and carry motors, okay, which is the efferent mode command out of the tissue. So when we say uh, under peripheral nervous system, afferent, it is the information to the central nervous system which provided or ito yung prenases ng, ng ating utak at sinabi niya na ganito yung maging reaction. So, that is afferent. While, when it is carry motor, or it is the command out of the tissue body, it is the efferent. That is peripheral nerve. That is under peripheral nervous system. The afferent and efferent. Afferent is the information that is processed. And then, the command that you will going to do, that is efferent. Afferent, efferent. We have two types of peripheral nervous system. We have your somatic and the autonomic. Under somatic, this is uh, this one is controls voluntarily motor command. So, for example, I am asking you a question. The class, I am asking the class a certain question, and you know the answer on my question. You raise your hand, so you know voluntarily that you are raising the hand. Okay, so that is a somatic nervous system. What if? Your uh, your body reacts even even you are not uh, even your body reacts involuntarily kahit ayaw mo for example kinabahan ka pinagpapawisan ka ayaw mo nang pagpawisan ka pero nagre-react yung body mo na pinagpapawisan ka so that is under autonomic nervous system controls involuntary motor command okay so under autonomic nervous system we have two types again you have your parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system your sympathetic nervous system is known as the fight or flight mechanism. This one will increase your alertness, stimulates tissues, and prevent the body and prepares the body to a quick response to unusual situation. Okay, bakit ka na bubugtong hininga? You are uh, on the nag pinagpapawisan because kinakabahan ka. So it will increase your alertness or your body alertness. It will increase your uh, tissue stimulates or it will stimulate your tissue and it will prepare you yan, sabi nga dyan, the the sympathetic nervous system will prepare the body to quick response to unusual situation kasi kinakabahan ka or something ganun or there is something na na kailangan mong uh, kailangan iput yung katawan mo into something that you must relax and then you will go to parasympathetic nervous system known as the rest and repose system you will now after sympathetic you will now go to parasympathetic this one is the conserves energy and put the subject in the relax mode okay the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system acts opposite with each other magkabaliktad when the person is under the influence of physical stimulus Exertion or emotional provocation such as excitement, fear, and anger, the sympathetic brand dominates. Okay, the sympathetic brand dominates and overrides the parasympathetic component. In effect, there will be changes in your pulse, your blood pressure, your breathing, response time, and voice. For example, um, confident ka na tama yung sinasabi mo. Therefore, parasympathetic. Your normal breathing, you have normal blood pressure, normal pulse rate, and response time as well as the voice. Tama lang. And then, hindi ka confident sa sinasabi mo. Or for example, nagsisinungaling ka. Therefore, you are, you are now on the sympathetic. There will be a changes in pulse rate kasi kinakaban ka sa sinasabi mo. Baka may masabi kang mali. Your blood pressure will increase. And then, your breathing, nagbubugtong hininga ka. And then, response time, medyo tumatagal kasi pinag-iisipan mo yung sinasabi mo. 
and then your voice may be on change or nagbabago yan kasi nag kinakabahan kasi sinasabi mo next when the condition of stress are no longer present okay when the condition of the stress are no longer present the parasympathetic branch work to restore things to normal sabi ko nga sa inyo after sympathetic you will go to parasympathetic why because your body need to restore things to normal thus the parasympathetic branch is dominant when things are normal and the person is calm Okay, that is contented and relaxed. It is by Solis of uh, 1987. So, why do we lie? We want to anticipate pleasure and avoid pain for the purpose of self-interest and self-promotion. Ensure privacy. Okay, we go back to number one. We want to anticipate pleasure and avoid pain. Pain in pleasure principle. Anticipate pleasure, maximize pleasure, and we want to avoid pain. Maybe white lies, o, ganyan. So, in, pero gusto natin ng puro sarap lang, ayaw natin ng hirap. Yan. And then number two, for the purpose of self-interest and self-promotion, you're promoting yourself. Okay? You, you want to have uh, privacy, or you want to ensure your privacy. And then number four is related to number three. I don't know. Number five is related to number Two, which is to gain profit and advantage as well as self-promotion okay self-interest number four you want to cover our your own embarrassment you want to cover our own embarrassment and then number six is protect others maybe this is white lies protect others that is the reason why do we lie next it is the condition where there is a excessive or abnormal propensity for lying and exaggerating Ah, nagsisinungaling ka. You are telling whatever you wanted to tell, which is not true naman. So, merong excessive and abnormal propensity for lying. This is mitomania. This is called mitomania. Okay, next. What is the most prevalent sign of deception? Gaze aversion. What is this? This is the inability of the subject to have an eye-to-eye -eye contact with the person question. Hindi niya kaya makipagtingin sa mata to mata. Okay? Yan. So, we have a kinds of lie, of course. Number one is direct denial. It's simply denying the allegation being thrown to the subject. It is manifested by the response, I did not do it. I do not do that. I did not. That is direct denial. For example, ah, ikaw ba pumatay? Hindi, hindi akong pumatay dyan. Oh, I did not do it. That is direct denial. So, you are throwing the allegation being thrown to you by the subject thrown it back. I did not do it. Nilalabas mo yung sarili mo. That is direct denial. Number two, lie of omission. The act of telling what transpired but omitting details that is that are incriminating. Okay, you are telling what transpired. Meron talaga. Okay. For example, oh, nangyari talaga yan. Pero, oh, nang pero ka, but, but, omitting details that are incriminating, binabawasan mo. Okay? Yung tinatanggal mo yung mga mga, parang Janet Napoles, di ba? I self incriminating o parang ganun. Ayaw niya sabihin yung mga bagay-bagay na which under that or yung kind of question siya. Ayaw niya sabihin yung mga bagay-bagay na uh, gustong malaman sa sa Senate, di ba? Yung ano kasi incriminating daw. So, yes, that thing transpired. Nag-transpire yung pagnanakaw o ganun. Pero yung mga details uh inuumit nila or tinatago nila. Okay? Next slide of exaggeration used by a person who overplays what actually happens okay this could be in form of a testimony where details are added to intensify the impact of the story you are overplay the real event ibig sabihin dinadagdagan mo kung ano yung nangyari hindi mo binabawasan but you are adding for example ang may pinatay may pinatay nga naman pero sinaksak pero ang sinabi mo Inarmalite, sin binaril ng isang daang beses, tapos grinanada pa. And hence, ang nangyari lang naman, binaril lang naman ng isang beses. Okay? So, yun. Tapos, ang kwento mo, binaril ng Armalite, pinagratrat hanggang mawasak yung katawan. After nun, grinanada pa. That is lie of exaggeration. You are intensifying the impact of the story. Okay? Though, totoong may namatay, pero hindi naman grinanada, hindi rin niratrat ng Armalite. It is just binaril lang. That is lie of exaggeration. Uh, this is lie of minimization.
Kabaligtaran naman ng lie of exaggeration. This one is involves the accepting of person that something happened but downplays the implication of the seriousness of the offense. Kabaligtaran lang. That is kabaligtaran lang ng lie of exaggeration. You are naman downplays the implication of the seriousness. Fabricated lie. This is the most difficult to use. Why? This involves the act of creating a story of series of events that never transpired. You are now making a story out of nothing. That is fabricated life. For example, is making a story that never happened. Okay? Yung wala talaga, walang, kabu- walang no, not kabuluhan, walang pundasyon na istorya. Kung baga, out of the dust, out of the universe. And then, you just come up into this story that is fabricated lie. White lie, okay? So, this is an honest lie or the harmless lie. It is intended not to harm others but told in order to avoid distress or embarrassment. It is a white lie, okay? White lie. Red lie, also called politics propaganda. It is intended to destroy a political belief or ideology. Who are the one using this one? Commonly, the NPA. Yeah. So, they destroy a political belief or the ideology of the youth to for them to able to get uh, sympathy and then mag-join kayo sa kanila. That is red light. Okay? Called propaganda or the polit- politics propaganda. We have your malicious lie. This is a chronic or constant lie that is extended a mislead justice. Examples is false testimony. Okay? False testimony. Maling testimonya. This is to intended to mislead justice. While well, you have compulsive lie, these are made by people who are being compelled to tell lie. Okay? We have types of liar. Panic liar is the number one. This is a person who panics when questioned about his involvement concerning a crime but immediately denies the truth. Why? To avoid shame or humiliation that it might cause to his family. That is panic liar. Next, occupational liar. This is an individual whose job is to tell lie and deceive other people. Why Why this occupational liar do it? One who is being paid to tell lies. Okay, bayad siya. He is practical liar. He will tell lie if doing it provides a higher pay of than telling the truth. So, may magbabayad ako. Just this, tell this, the, just tell this thing and I will pay you. So, this liar will do it. Tournament liar is a person who used the act of lying to test his ability so and prove to him or her self that he is capable of deceiving the police or, or authorities. In view, in view, class is that telling lies is one form of contest. This tournament liar uh, view that telling lie is one of form is one form of a contest. So contest daw yun, uh, laban yun, or contest yun. To prove himself that he is capable of deceiving police authorities. Tournament liar. This one, ethnological liar is a person trained to lie. Ethnological liar. Who are this? Commonly, we have this ethnological liar uh, on the law enforcement sector is your intelligence group. Siyempre, you do not want it to be burned out. So, maybe you will be trained to lie for the good of the government naman. We have your psychopathic liar. It's an individual who has no conscience. Wala tong konsensya. Kasi, it is capable of lying to the point of causing even the death to other people. Wala siyang pakailam. Psychopathic liar. Next, we have your pathological liar. is a sick person <clears throat> who tells a lie simply because he cannot distinguish what is right from wrong. Merong sakit sa pag-iisip. And then, he tells whatever he wanted to tell. Pathological liar. We have your black liar is one who enjoys pretending and better known as hypocrite. Who are these black liar in the modern era? This one are those who are social climber. Yan. If you're a social climber, therefore you are a black liar. You enjoy pretending even you are not that kind of whatever you say. So you are better known as hypocrite. Hypocrite. Yan. So, hypocrite in old ages siguro. Pero millennial na kasi tayo ngayon. Maybe you can now call him social climber. But, calling him social climber is the same as calling him or her as hypocrite. Because he is the one enjoys pretending. And he or she is black liar. 
So that is the end of my lecture. I hope you enjoy it. Knowledge is the key to a good future.